Okay, so first thing we're going to do is go over a couple definitions. So first thing we're going to talk about is domain. So if you remember anything about domain, do you remember what it represents? No? X. Okay, so it's all possible X values. Um, I will often say it's your side, by, uh, side to side. And that's because your X axis goes side to side. And you'll always start on a graph farthest left and work your way right. And that will help you keep it least to greatest. Okay, so your range is all possible Y values. I often call this your height. And you'll start lowest and work your way up so it stays least to greatest. Okay, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. Anybody remember what ordered pairs are? It's just a fancy way of saying your points. You okay? Okay. It's just your points, your x comma y. Now, a function is a relation. where x can not repeat. Does it say anything about y? No, it's only x that we worry about. x cannot repeat it to be a function. So a function is always a relation, but a relation is not always a function, okay? So knowing that we have some points here, for example one and we're gonna put them in our table now in your table properly we always put X from least to greatest so that means the point negative 8 1 has to go first negative 2 negative 1 0 negative 6 3 5 5 0 6 negative 4 so it's just these points but I put the X in order And now we're going to plot the points. So again, your x is the first one, and that's your side to side. So I'm from 0, 0, I'm going to go to the side, positive 3, and the height of 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that's point A. I'm looking at this list versus my table because I want to label them. Okay, so then I have negative 2, so side to side, negative 2, down 1. Side to side, negative 8, up 1. Side to side, 6, down 4. Now, when you have a 0, again, the first number is your side to side. So I'm going to side to side, 5, up and down, 0. So it just stayed. Well, this one says side to side, 0, so I don't go side to side, but then I go down 6. So that's your refresher on plotting points. And then we're going to talk about quadrants quickly. So quadrants, I don't know if you remember, but you label quadrants like if a C, if you're drawing a C. So if I draw a C, I start top right and I work my way around. Meaning this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two, and you write it in Roman numerals, quadrant three, quadrant four. Now if you're like me and you hate Roman numerals, I don't care if you use just numbers. So knowing that, look at point A. What quadrant is that in? B? Three. C? Two. D? 
4. Now we'll look at E. Is it in a quadrant or is it on a line? What line? It's your x-axis. And then F is also on a line and that's on my y-axis. If you struggle with remembering which one's x, which one's y, it's y to the sky. So y is your up and down. Any questions with this? So I'm actually going to skip domain and range because we have plenty of practice of that and I want to explain something before we do that. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at these four pieces. So what I want you to understand here is that these are all going to be discrete. I don't know if you remember the words discrete and continuous from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. But discrete, the way we know that a graph or a set of points is discrete is because it's dots. And by that I mean points. But I say dots because discrete dots helps you remember. Because if you look at my graph, isn't that just dots, no lines? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and aren't these just points themselves? Mm -hmm. So that's also dots, points, same thing. So when we have it discrete, our domain and our range are written in braces, that's the word for this, but we call them fancy brackets, as a list. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay, so if we look at number one, we're looking at x for domain. So x values are these first numbers. So I have negative 1, 2, 7, 8. Did x repeat? No. They were all their own number, therefore this is a function. And this is what I mean by a list. See how I did negative 1, comma 2, comma 7, comma 8, because those are all my possible x values. Now when I look at y, I have 1, 3, 3, 6. Y repeated, but does that matter? No. I do not have to write repeats though. So I have 1, comma 3, comma 6. If you do write repeats, I'm not going to take off, but you do not have to write repeats. Yes. So let's look at number 2. So on this one, I have 0, 1, 0, 7. Did x repeat? Yeah. So let's write our domain first, 0, 1, 7. But I know that 0 happened twice, so x repeated, which means, is this a function and a relation or a relation only? Relation only. Now when I look at y's, I have negative 2, 5, 3, 7, but we should write them least to greatest. So negative 2, 3, 5, 7. Any questions with that? Hopefully this is simple reminders. Okay, so now let's look at the graphs. So if you look at these, it's the same concept as this. It just doesn't give us the ordered pairs. We have to find the numbers, okay? But I know, do y'all remember how to tell from a graph if it is a function? It's a test. Starts with a V. Yes, it's the vertical line test. Okay, so I'm going to show y'all how the vertical line test works. So if I draw a vertical line everywhere I have a dot, or anywhere on my graph technically, did it ever touch a dot more than once? Each line only has one dot, correct? Mm -hmm. That means this is a function. However, before we talk about domain and range, if we look at number two, if I draw a vertical line, do you see how right here it touched two dots? That's because x repeated. That's x one time and x again. So that means this is a relation only. So that's the way the vertical line test works. OK, 
Okay, so now we're going to look at domain and range. So I don't know if you remember, but I said x is our side to side, meaning I'm looking at my x-axis only for numbers because it's my possible x values. So where is this number side to side? For starting my farthest left, working right, this one is all the way negative 4. This one is negative 2, negative 1, and this is positive 1. So there's my domain. Now range, I said start lowest and work your way up. So my lowest dot is here, which is a height of negative 2. Both of these are at a negative 1, and we don't have to write repeats. And this is at a height of 2. So that's how it works on a graph. Thank you. Any questions with that? Okay, so let's look at number two. Same concept, far this left is negative two. Then I have two of them at one, and one at two. And then we're looking at height. So lowest is negative three, negative one, and then two, three. So when you're done writing that down, flip to the back. Okay, so now we have lines. So these are not discrete because we have lines. We don't have dots only. So we call this continuous. And it's because I have lines and dots. Now, when we write domain and range now, we call this interval notation. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on our examples versus like making up some random ones because that won't make sense. Now, with the things you do need to know about interval notation is that you use parentheses and square brackets. You use a parenthesis when you have an open dot or infinity. And you use a square bracket when you have a closed dot or it touches. Now, um, infinity is not a number. You can't touch infinity, and that's why infinity has a parenthesis. Um, we don't use a lot of open dots in my class, but it is a thing. It's something like if I said if I have less than $6, can I have $6? No, so I can't put a solid dot on a six representing that. However, could I have five dollars and ninety-nine cents? Mm -hmm. And isn't that right next to six? So that's when you would use something like an open dot, so it represents that it goes all the way there, but not exactly. Okay, now a closed dot would be if I have less than or equal to six, because then I can have six dollars or less, and that's when it. Does that make sense on the difference between the two dots? Cool. So knowing that, let's look. So if we look at this first one. I know, well first off, let's do domain uh, function and relation first. So if I draw a vertical line, does it ever touch my line more than once? No, so this is a function. If I draw the vertical line, does it ever touch my graph more than once? No, so this is a function. Again, vertical line doesn't touch more than once, it's a function. But when I get to this circle, what happens? It touches more than one, so it's a relation only. Any questions with that? Okay, cool. So knowing that, now let's look at domain and range. So if we look at this first one, domain is my side to side. Well, what's my farthest left this graph goes? It has an arrow. Infinity. meaning it could keep going forever. However, left is positive or negative? So it's going to be negative infinity. Now, if it can go also to the right forever, what would that be? Positive infinity. So this goes from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, meaning every single number in the world is included in this for x. And then remember, range is my height. Well, doesn't this go down forever? 
Yeah, is it ever going to quit going down if I extend the graph further? No, so it also goes negative infinity. And does it go up forever? Yeah, the pattern goes up forever, so this is also positive infinity. Now, when it's a linear line like this, it's always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. There are, like this one doesn't have arrows, so that one will be different. And there's two special cases that we'll talk about in a second that don't always look like that. Every other time, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so now let's look at a quadratic graph. That was linear. This is quadratic. Now, does this go left? How far left does this go? Well, it has an arrow, meaning it's going to continue the pattern. Doesn't that mean it's going to slowly but surely keep going to the left, keep going to the right? So this is also negative infinity to positive infinity. However, does this go down forever? Well, yeah, I have two arrows facing down, so yes, it goes down forever. Does it go up forever? No. What's the highest it went? Three. Three. But it touches 3, so we use a square bracket with our 3. So this is saying my range, my height, is everything from negative infinity up to 3. <laughs> Any questions with this so far? Okay, with quadratics proper that open upwards and downwards, it'll, your domain will always be negative infinity infinity. Okay, so now let's look at this one that has the starting point and the stopping point. Well, what's the farthest left this graph goes? Negative 3, and it has a closed dot. It touches that. What's the farthest right this graph goes? There's your domain. And what that means is that means that there is a point everywhere between negative 3 and 4, every possibility. Now, what's the lowest it goes? Negative 1, and what's the highest it goes? And the circle's the same way. What's the farthest left this goes? And the farthest right? Positive 3. What's the lowest it goes is negative 2, and the highest it goes is positive 2. Any questions with those? OK. OK, so let's look at the equations. I like to sketch my equations because that makes more sense to y'all. Now we're also going to edit number two's equation. It says 2x plus 1. We're going to make it 2x squared plus 1. So make sure you write that so you don't get confused later on why your graph's not a straight line. So knowing that, if I were to graph these, Um, if I type y equals x in my calculator and I hit graph, it's like the perfect diagonal. Okay, that's the linear parent function, and it looks just like a diagonal, straight through 0, 0. Well, doesn't that look similar to number 3, the example right above it? Yes. So is it a function? Yes. And it's just negative infinity to positive infinity for both because it goes up and down forever, it goes left and right forever. Now, 2x squared plus 1, 2x squared plus 1, by graph, it's a quadratic. Now, it's a skinnier quadratic. That's what that 2 does. It makes it grow twice as fast. And it, the plus 1 means it shifted up 1. Yes? So that means that this looks like this. And this is 1. Yes? Everybody okay with that? So what is the farthest left this graph goes? What's the farthest right this graph goes? Yeah, infinity. And it's a quadratic, which is a function, just like the problem right above it. However, the one above it was negative. That's why it opened downwards. That's the only difference. However, what's the lowest this graph goes? One. And what's the highest it goes? Up forever, so infinity. Now the next two we're talking about are special cases. These are the times when a linear line will not always be negative infinity infinity, and it's only these two types of equations. 
So if we type y equals 5 in my calculator, what is it missing? What is this? Not x. Sorry. Yeah, it doesn't have an x. And that means it's a special case because it only has one letter. What do you notice about the line? Yeah, it's straight across. This is a horizontal line, and we use hoi vux to help us remember these. So hoi is for horizontal, zero slope, y equals equation. So this is at a height of 5 because y equals 5. Is it a function? If I drew a bunch of vertical lines, would it only touch once? Yeah, so it's a function. Does it go left forever and right forever? Yeah, so this is negative infinity, positive infinity. Does it go up and down forever? No, what's the only height this line ever is? Five, so your range is just five. Okay, so vux is what we call these. Now, this is an x equals equation, and our calculator does not let us type these, so you can't type this in your calculator. And that's how you should know that right away something's wrong with it, yes? If this time it's a vertical line, it's undefined, and it's x equals, so it's x equals at negative 1. Now, this is not a function, because if I drew a vertical line over that, wouldn't it touch an infinite amount of times? Yeah, so it touches more than once, which means it's not a function. Domain and range, does it go left and right forever? No, what's the only side to side it ever is? Negative 1. However, does it go down forever? Yeah. Does it go up forever? So these are your special cases when you have straight lines. Okay? Um, that's the only time it'll look weird like that. Cool? Any questions with that? Okay, the last three we're not going to go into like full detail with just because it gets repetitive. Um, this is called mapping. And it's either a table or it has these circle things. We like these circle things because it puts it in order for us. Like if you notice, aren't x and y already in order? That makes our life really easy, okay, for domain and range. You would do these as a list, negative 2, comma 4, comma 5 for domain. Does that make sense? Okay, but this is the part that we want to talk about. See how they all only have one arrow? That means they all only have one point. So negative 2, comma 3, 4, comma 6, 5, comma 5. Did x ever repeat? So it's a function. Now, tables should be really easy. 1, 4, 6, x never repeated. Y did, but that doesn't bother us. This is a function. The last one, though, what do you notice about 7? That means this is 7, negative 3, 7, positive 3. Didn't we just say 7 twice? Therefore, x repeated. And is this a function? It's a relation only. So you would find your domain and range still, but to save time, we're not going to talk about that because that's pretty simple and straightforward. We've already done a bunch of examples. So this is what you're working on. If you have questions, ask. Um, we're not working on this again on Monday.